Well, as you can see, we want to talk about St. Augustine University, or also known as Augustine University, a private Catholic-owned university located in Ilara, a town in Ekwe, uh, Ekwe local government area of Lagos State, uh, southwestern Nigeria, just in case you don't know. Now, the university upholds a noble tradition of Catholic higher education, uh, uh, of achieving intellectual, cultural, and moral excellence by preparing them for leadership and enterprise. Professor Christopher Odetunde joins us this morning to talk about this. He is the Vice Chancellor of the University. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Well, you know, as uh, we said just before we came on air, the first thing that scares people about private university, cost, and is it sustainable? With respect to the cost, I think when you look at universities in general, education in general, it is a means of giving your children the inheritance. Mm. And it will, cost, it will not cost you much to train them so that they can keep training themselves when you are long gone. Secondly, the cost. There are secondary schools in Nigeria that are paying more than 2 million naira for just the education. But in most of the private universities, especially Augustine University, the adults is, is uh, putting their money into it, augmenting the, uh, the, the tuition for the students. So, and our cost is about, the, the maximum is 800,000 Naira for... Is that for the whole year? Or for, for the whole year. Really? Yes. So it's not that much if you look at it from that point of view. That's the website, I, I can see that. Yes, that's website. our website. Okay. Uh, what are the information that, that are available on the website? Um, uh, it's easy to assume it's everything, but what's been the experience? Let me even talk about that. What's, the, what's been the experience uh, of, uh, you know, of your own experience since this university started? Well, to begin with, uh, when I, the first time I went to the university was my first visit. And I was pleasantly surprised by the sorry, serene environment. And those serene environments are so good for studying, and our kids, our students are very happy with it. Those that come to visit us, after they leave, they always give us compliments. Mm. And I think it's the vision of the uh, visionaire, Archbishop, I mean, uh, Cardinal Okoje, that started the university. And the present, uh, visitor is also continuing this, in this type of uh, situation. What is the vision? Uh, because it's easy for anyone to assume that it's all money. I mean, just, it's a private university um, and all of that. So what's the vision? Why that we, there are those who would argue that we have way too many schools already, universities what? especially. I don't think, I'll talk about the vision, but you don't have, you will never have too many universities. Since federal government is not able to provide all that we need, somebody else has to provide. So the private universities are just, uh, uh, the lacuna that is left is covered by the private universities. Now the vision of a Catholic university, if you look at, during the, uh, uh, the old olden times, the ministries were centers of, of excellence and scholarship. And these ministries were converted into uh, universities. So our vision, our mission is to make sure that we, we get uh, kids that are well positioned to take over the system and for them to be able to lead the country in development. Professor? Yes. I'm a beneficiary of um, the Catholic, Catholic upbringing. And um, I must say that my parents had no regrets for sending me to a Catholic school, even though they were not a Catholic family. Um, 
and I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, yes. the Catholic upbringing. Does this extend also to the university? Thank will, you, we, will we see that kind of culture also in, well, they're not young adolescents anymore. They, they, they are young adults. Adults. Yes, at the university level. Thank you, ma'am. I think I'm glad to also tell you that I'm a, I'm a recipient of uh, a Catholic upbringing. Although I've been a Catholic all my life, but I've seen in the north where I came from, I've seen a lot of our Muslim brothers brought up in the universities, and they are doing very well now. The way we structure the universities that we bring, we, we bring the students to a wholesome uh, human development, both spiritual, uh, academics, and physical. So the, our students are given these opportunities uh, to be developed, and we are very happy with it. And indeed, some of their parents do call us and appreciate us for the type of uh, environment the, the, the students are studying and how we deal with them. Encouraging. Um, what about the nature of the courses being offered at the university? It, it's a young university, so we don't expect them to have all the faculties and all the departments that the other established universities do have. So what, what is the forte of the Augustine University? Indeed, when we started, when the university was started, they started with English and philosophy, those Not typical... Really. Humanities. Humanities, <laughs> which is okay because we need them all. But now we are going into other areas. We are into cybersecurity, especially because our banks have been uh, raided by uh, Yahoo Boys. So you must be able to, you must have people that can deal with it instantly as they are creating their own system. These guys are also doing the same. So for, for instance, we have uh, cyber security, software engineering. We have political science now. We have uh, mass comm. And these areas will bring a lot of students in, especially with our serene environment. Mm -hmm. OK, well, um, as Alero mentioned earlier, they are not adolescents. They are young adults. Quite a lot of energy. Yes. <laughs> so um, with all that, you know, one is hearing about uh, student communities and what they do to themselves and all, and all of that, while the Catholic um, system may be high on morals, the students are coming from various backgrounds. Yes. How do we manage um, those diversities and to ensure that those moral codes are not breached while on campus? To begin with, our faculty members and people working with us, they're also coming from diverse environment. So they can deal with these students whichever way they want to do it, they are capable of handling them. <laughs> but notwithstanding, even if they can't, you can't have 100%. Where our university believes in zero tolerance, in cultism, in... Uh, a, you know, exam malpractice and the rest of it. But we get our parents involved. I think that's the, that's the cue. You get parents involved so that if something happens, the parents are also involved. They can advise their children. But most importantly, the training, moral training of the children ought to come from home. There's nothing you can do if coming from that home it's not well, I mean, the, 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 the kid is not well behaved. Well, prof, he comes then to you, the university. There's no, you we, know, you we, know, accept, you know, we accept some. Well, Prof, you know that you know, it is one thing for, to t teach the children. It's another thing for the children to accept the teaching. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> sometimes, well, I mean, some students, for instance, do not represent the codes at home. You yeah. would remember, of course, uh, um, uh, the, the Mutalab story. The father is not that kind of person. And then the boy, you know, ends up being who, who he is. So that's the background against which I'm speaking. How do okay. we ensure that when those students come and they begin to manifest certain things that are unbecoming 
Yes. That uh, they don't, uh, what's the word now? In, become cancerous, if I can use the term, mm. in the entire system. If I can give you an example. Suppose a, a kid is taking drug and you find out. What do we do? We make sure that we send that kid to a hospital so that they can moderate and make sure that at the end of that moderation, if they find him worthy of coming back to the campus, they bring him back. If not, there's nothing we can do. Okay, you said that the university has zero tolerance for, for cultism. cultism. And I smiled when you, said, when you said that. How exactly do you do that? Well, we monitor it. Because monitor them. kids in cults are very secretive. I know. Because we, I mean, we have heard of certain people who turned out to be in cults and we were, <gasps> <laughs> I mean, no, this cannot be true. The most unlikely person is the head of the cult. I know. So how exactly do you do it? Well, when you say people, students are in cult, that means somebody must have found out. There's no way you can do everything enough. Somebody will not find out something about you. And when we do, we isolate such students mm -hmm. and cancel them. Okay. We have counselors on campus that will advise them. We call their parents, we let, let them know before we take further steps. And if they don't change, they are taken out of the university. Well, the school has been on since November 2015. 2015. Have you had such experiences at all? Such what? Such experiences. experiences. No, I haven't. You have not found anybody never, be belonging found. to any no. kind of cult? No. Okay. Well, okay. They're, they're, I don't know. So far. Maybe okay. I'll find tomorrow, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm touching wood on your behalf. <laughs> I'm knocking on wood. <laughs> well, uh, how do you, you of course know about this whole Tet Fund uh, story and it's um, not too pleasant effects on private universities. What's the relationship and how, do you, how is it managed? If you look at the history of Tet Fund, Tet Fund was created to help the universities get some more funding to help the faculties to grow. That was then. But the law that created Tech fund, laws are not static. Laws are supposed to be dynamic. So since the private universities came in, they ought to revisit that, that law. I understand the purpose of which it was created, but now situations have changed. How did they get the tech fund? The way is that every company puts in certain percentage into that, into that account. And the money grows. Now, you and I, because we're working, whether you're in private or, sec or public, you're also contributing to that fund. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we cannot discriminate against the people in, because we're all taxpayers contributing to that fund. And that's why we're, we're praying that the government will revisit that law and change it somehow so that it's more competitive. It's not that we're giving you the money you compete for it. If you qualify, you'll be given. If you are not, it's fair. It's a fair game. Mm. Now, what are your plans for postgraduate studies? When the uh, NUC has granted us postgraduate, right now, we are in, on the verge of starting our postgraduate in three uh, areas. Once you have uh, graduated at least three sets, in the university, you can start postgraduate. Okay. So we are, we are ready for postgraduate now. Not ready, only ready that. As in what's, what's 2023 session? Well, we're thinking of 2023. Okay, and what faculties will be the first ones that well, you're looking at? Uh, accounting, economics, uh, computer science, physics, all of those, uh, com all, all of those departments. Yes. Since you mentioned physics, Professor, um, what are your laboratories like? Our laboratories are fine, but we are, we are trying to get a better, a bigger laboratory as we increase the number of students. So that's what we are doing right now. We've, we've discussed it with uh, the, the outdoors. They are aware of it, and they are willing to help us grow the, 
those universities, uh, those uh, labs. Yeah. Is there is there any field that you would say if you want the best? Okay, we have several others, but if you want the best of this particular field, come, come to, to Saint Augustine. Computer science, political science, uh, mass comm. In which case, I'm hoping that <laughs> you guys will invite. Only so, uh, after only five six years. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we are okay. I yeah. like your confidence. I'm, I'm confident. <laughs> that's, listen, that's why I'm there. To be the confident builder. Ah, hey, Santa go. And and uh, and uh, <laughs> remember, we're also bringing on from what you said. We are bringing bringing in law, engineering, nursing. From when? From. From what? what? As from well, we are. We, it's in our, our academic brief. Okay. We've started making plans for them. Mm. And well, the buildings are ongoing as we we talk. I see okay. that you know. Even on the front, on the website, yes. can I say the front page of your website, <laughs> uh, I, I only see fisheries and aquaculture, not agriculture in its full scheme. Is that, is that deliberate? It's deliberate. Okay. We don't want to start agriculture yet because fishery is easier to manage for now. We're a small university. And we, you see, our growth must be purposeful. That's not need to grow the university Listen, if you grow the university, you have two things going for you. One. You don't you want to be a UI. Yeah, <laughs> we want to, but not, not now. <laughs> but if you grow the university, the infrastructures must also accomplish. accomplish. Yeah. Yeah. Therefore, we don't want to overgrow the university such that the, the very purpose of keeping all the students in the hostel will be defeated. Once they are defeated, we lose control of... The, the, the university. Yeah. Now, uh, so, is, or is it because, is, is it fisheries and aquaculture because it's Ekwe and there's a lot of fish there? <laughs> well, <laughs> that could be part of it, but uh, <laughs> it is easier to manage fishery and aquaculture. Okay. And also, we are in Ekwe. <laughs> <laughs> Where there's plenty of fish. There's plenty, plenty of fish. <laughs> so I'm we sure, can complement the... But I'm sure you have fish farms on campus. We do, we do. Okay. Yes. So it doesn't matter that you're in it. Yes. So as you said, you know, it's been seven years. I'm going to ask about experience again. And I ask it advisedly. More and more universities are springing up here and there, uh, getting confidence in the you know, university system in country is quite something. You definitely have been in the, in the academics for long enough to know uh, some of the issues that, uh, that we have in terms of education in the country. Um, there are those who are putting big question marks on the education policy of the country. There are those who are arguing that it's not futuristic. It's not really preparing students for the next generation. It's just something to get by by the day and all of that. So when they talk about development and they talk about growth, it's really not as uh, confidence building, if I can use your words, as that because the policy isn't looking forward it's just looking at maybe today or the near the nearest future how do you react to that well if you look at i'm i'm sorry to say that education in nigeria is not focused and i'll tell you why why do we grow the universities what's the purpose if the purpose is to develop the university itself we are failing because the government if you were doing business if you put a lot of money into business, at the end of three, four years, you must be asking yourself, how is this person performing? There are a lot of smart Nigerians, and we can see that all over the world. But are we challenged within Nigeria? No. People just want to go to university because I want to have a degree. What is the degree doing for you? Yes. You must ask yourself, at the end of this, what will I use my degree for? I've seen people that went to uh, pharmacy in the US, Nigerians, they went to law, and they're great lawyers. The university must be a way to prepare the students for challenges, any challenges in the world. And what we do in our university is to be pragmatic. How do we become pragmatic? Let's look at our, uh, our accounting, for example. By the time the students finish their accounting, they will have been 
ICANN compatible. Mm. Okay? Mm. The students can be sure that they, are, they have their ICANN because we're in collaboration with ICANN. And I think that's what we need to do in every of the courses we are teaching mm. to be more pragmatic. I've seen people with first classes, and you, I'm sure you know. Mm. You see people with first classes, ah, I just know how to read, you get first class, and at the end of it, you say, okay, what did I do to get this thing for? Yeah. And I've seen people with first classes, <laughs> believe me, they are ruling the country. To, to corroborate what you said, the, 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 our professionals don't get challenged enough. I recall what I read, I think, I think it was about China or Japan, where the president said, look, I want our country to have the fastest train in the world. So all of you engineers, get together. These are your timelines. I want you to develop the fastest train in the world. And it did. Uh, professionals don't get challenged like that in our in country. In Nigeria. Which speaks and to... Okay. Which is the reason why a lot of them are going away. To, a, to other countries where they, they, can they can be challenged, exercise their skills and be challenged and work. So here is just the normal run of the mill kind of thing that an engineer does. Which also raises the question again, if we're going to have a futuristic education system in the country, Prof, what should we be doing? What should we be looking at? In what direction would you suggest that we focus? Okay. For, his, for, for me, I look at what are we lacking? What we're lacking, everybody complains of electricity. Everybody complains of engineers. the road. <laughs> we engineers, we complain. You said the best. Has the government ever say, I've been paying so much money on you? You electric engineers, go and find ways to fix, to fix the Nepa. electricity. Yes. To Nepal. You Civil engineers go there to fix the roads. Mechanical engineers join them. Okay? What, if you look at the way education is, I'll give you. We have problem in Nigeria. The title. If you talk to somebody and he says, you know, I can do this, say, uh, do you have a degree? The first thing, no. You set him aside. Let me look at my area, aerospace engineering. Know the history of aerospace engineering. Who started it? Mere bicycle repair people on the road. They were bicycle repairers. The Wright brothers. And today, you and I will fly, will smile, as if it was a professor that did it. So until we challenge ourselves, which is why when I got to uh, Augustine University, one of the things I did was, look, if you want to join us here as a lecturer, I don't want somebody that will just take a textbook that is written. Any idiot can read a textbook and vomit. What are you adding? What value are you adding to my students? If you are not adding any value, I don't need you. That's the purpose of a uh, private university. You can challenge them. Public university, once you get in there, you can't get them out. Mm. <laughs> right? <laughs> and number two about private universities is that, look, if you say you are going for a four-year course, it's a four-year course. It's not extended to 10 years. So yeah, no yeah. strikes? No okay. strikes. Hmm. You know. All right. Assurance? But, yes, assurance. No but the, the, but the, I have to give it to Professor, those who are... you are marketing your university. To. Yes. <laughs> I can assure you, I appreciate those who are helping us, who are uh, striking, because they are doing it for a purpose. For so many reasons, we couldn't have gotten what we got. You know, so I'm not pushing them as that. I still love them. But we can guarantee you that if it's five years, it's you're five, five years. years. Well, what else would I expect you to say? But someone <laughs> is just asking you a question now that, okay, in the UK, she cited an example of a, a, a UK where without a BSc, your work experience qualifies you to sit for master's. Is that something that uh, the St. Augustine, well, Augustine University Augustine. might be considering? And I, well, we are following the NUC guideline. Okay. Ah, okay. And it's, but NUC, I'll give them credit. NUC is looking towards adjusting some of their uh, policies. And we wait to see the policy. Okay. Because you don't have to have a first degree to be an outstanding inventor. I know that for sure. Well, social media had a young 15-year-old boy who did a motorcycle out of a bicycle. 
Interesting. So we, we are really excited at Augustine, Augustine University because all these things I'm preaching to you now, we are following up with it. Okay. We can only wait. Please. And, uh, well, most certainly we will wait. I wish you all wait. the best. <laughs> Shall we use Ekpe? Yes. Okay. Come to Ekpe. <laughs> Come and visit us in Ekpe. It's just down the road. It's uh, on the road. Um, mm -hmm. I'll think about that. <laughs> Professor... Christopher Odetunde, Vice Chancellor of Gosling University, thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's nice to be visiting with this you. Morning. Okay. Thank you. So it's uh, the home stretch right after now. Do stay with us. Uh,